York is a city and unitary authority area in North Yorkshire, England. The population of the council area, which includes nearby villages, was 208,200 as of 2017, and the population of the urban area was 153,717 at the 2011 census. Located at the confluence of the rivers Ouse and Foss, it is the county town of the historic county of Yorkshire. The city is known for its famous historical landmarks such as York Minster and the city walls, as well as a variety of cultural and sporting activities, which makes it a popular tourist destination in England. The local authority is the City of York Council, a single-tier governing body responsible for providing all local services and facilities throughout the city. The City of York Local Government District includes rural areas beyond the old city boundaries. It is about 20 miles northeast of Leeds. The city was founded by the Romans as Eboricum in 71 AD. It became the capital of the Roman province of Britannia Inferior, and later of the kingdoms of Dera, Northumbria and Jorvik. In the Middle Ages, York grew as a major wool trading centre and became the capital of the northern ecclesiastical province of the Church of England, a role it has retained. In the 19th century, York became a major hub of the railway network and a confectionery manufacturing centre, a status it maintained well into the 20th century. During the Second World War, York was bombed as part of the Baedeker Blitz. Although less affected by bombing than other northern cities, several historic buildings were gutted and restoration efforts continued into the 1960s. In 2000, York suffered very severe flooding as the River Ouse rose, affecting over 300 homes. The economy of York is dominated by services. The University of York and National Health Service are major employers, whilst tourism has become an important element of the local economy. In 2016, York became sister cities with the Chinese city of Nanjing, as per an agreement signed by the Lord Mayor of York, focusing on building links in tourism, education, science, technology and culture. Today, the city is a popular tourist attraction, especially for international visitors from China and Asia. In 2017, York became UK's first human rights city, which formalised the city's aim to use human rights in decision-making. topic history topic <inaudible> <inaudible> origin of the name the word york old norse jorvik is derived from the brittonic name eberacan latinized variously as eboracum eberacum or eberachi a combination of eberos yew tree cf old irish abar yew tree Irish Iova, Uva, Io, Gaelic Uva, Welsh EFWR, Alder Buckthorn, Breton Eva, Alder Buckthorn, and a suffix of a pertinence asterisk acho n, belonging to, place of, cf, Welsh og, meaning either, place of the yew trees, cf, efrog in Welsh, Old Irish ubric, grove of yew trees, place with one or more yew trees. Uric in Irish Gaelic and Uvraish in Scottish Gaelic, the city itself is called Ervraish Irish and Ervrig in those languages, from the Latin Eboricum, or alternatively, the settlement of a man named Eboros. A Celtic personal name is mentioned in different documents as Eboros, Eburus and Eburius and, when combined with the Celtic possessive suffix asterisk ako n, could be used to denote his property. The name Eboricum became the Anglian Eophoric in the 7th century, a compound of Eophor, from the old name, and Wicca village, probably by conflation of the element Ebor with a Germanic root asterisk Eberas By the 7th century the Old English for bor had become Eophor. When the Danish army conquered the city in 866, its name became Jorvik. The Old French and Norman name of the city following the Norman conquest was recorded as Everwick, modern Norman, Averoe, in works such as Wace's Roman de Ro. Jorvik, meanwhile, gradually reduced to York in the centuries after the conquest, moving from the Middle English Yerk in the 14th century through York in the 16th century to Yark in the 17th century. The form York was first recorded in the 13th century. 
Many company and place names, such as the Ebor Race Meeting, refer to the Latinized Britonic, Roman name. The 12th century chronicler Geoffrey of Monmouth, in his fictional account of the prehistoric kings of Britain, Historia Regum Britanniae, suggests the name derives from that of a pre Roman city founded by the legendary King Ebraucus. The Archbishop of York uses Ebor as his surname in his signature. Early history Archaeological evidence suggests that Mesolithic people settled in the region of York between 8000 and 7000 BC, although it is not known whether their settlements were permanent or temporary. By the time of the Roman conquest of Britain, the area was occupied by a tribe known to the Romans as the Brigantes. The Brigantian tribal area initially became a Roman client state, but later its leaders became more hostile and the Roman 9th Legion was sent north of the Humber into Brigantian territory. The city was founded in 71 AD, when the 9th Legion conquered the Brigantes and constructed a wooden military fortress on flat ground above the River Ouse close to its confluence with the River Foss. The fortress, whose walls were rebuilt in stone by the Vi Legion base there subsequent to the Ix Legion, covered an area of 50 acres 20 hectares and was inhabited by 6,000 legionary soldiers. The site of the Principia HQ of the fortress lies under the foundations of York Minster, and excavations in the Undercroft have revealed part of the Roman structure and columns. The emperors Hadrian, Septimius Severus and Constantius I all held court in York during their various campaigns. During his stay 207–211 AD, the emperor Severus proclaimed York capital of the province of Britannia Inferior, and it is likely that it was he who granted York the privileges of a colonia or city. Constantius I died in 306 AD during his stay in York, and his son Constantine the Great was proclaimed emperor by the troops based in the fortress. In 314 AD a bishop from York attended the council at Arles to represent Christians from the province, while the Roman colonia and fortress were on high ground. By 400 AD the town was victim to occasional flooding from the rivers Ouse and Foss, and the population reduced. York declined in the post Roman era, and was taken and settled by the Angles in the 5th century. Reclamation of parts of the town was initiated in the 7th century under King Edwin of Northumbria, and York became his chief city. The first wooden minster church was built in York for the baptism of Edwin in 627, according to the Venerable Bede. Edwin ordered the small wooden church be rebuilt in stone, however, he was killed in 633, and the task of completing the stone minster fell to his successor Oswald. In the following century, Alcuin of York came to the Cathedral School of York. He had a long career as a teacher and scholar, first at the school at York now known as St. Peter's School, founded in 627 AD, and later as Charlemagne's leading advisor on ecclesiastical and educational affairs. In 866, Northumbria was in the midst of internecine struggles when the Vikings raided and captured York. Under Viking rule the city became a major river port, part of the extensive Viking trading routes throughout northern Europe. The last ruler of an independent Jorvik, Eric Bloodaxe, was driven from the city in 954 AD by King Edred in his successful attempt to complete the unification of England. <laughs> After the conquest In 1068, two years after the Norman conquest of England, the people of York rebelled. Initially they were successful, but upon the arrival of William the Conqueror the rebellion was put down. William at once built a wooden fortress on a motte. In 1069, after another rebellion, the king built another timbered castle across the River Ouse. These were destroyed in 1069 and rebuilt by William about the time of his ravaging Northumbria in what is called the Harrying of the North, where he destroyed everything from York to Durham. The remains of the rebuilt castles, now in stone, are visible on either side of the River Ouse. See Peter Rex's The English Resistance, The Underground War Against the Normans, 2006. The first stone minster church was badly damaged by fire in the uprising, and the Normans built a minster on a new site. 
Around the year 1080, Archbishop Thomas started building the cathedral that in time became the current minster. In the 12th century York started to prosper. In 1190, York Castle was the site of an infamous massacre of its Jewish inhabitants, in which at least 150 Jews died although some authorities put the figure as high as 500. The city, through its location on the River Ouse and its proximity to the Great North Road, became a major trading center. King John granted the city's first charter in 1212, confirming trading rights in England and Europe. During the later Middle Ages, York merchants imported wine from France, cloth, wax, canvas, and oats from the Low Countries, timber and furs from the Baltic, and exported grain to Gascony and grain and wool to the Low Countries. York became a major cloth manufacturing and trading centre. Edward I further stimulated the city's economy by using the city as a base for his war in Scotland. The city was the location of significant unrest during the so-called Peasants' Revolt in 1381. The city acquired an increasing degree of autonomy from central government including the privileges granted by a charter of Richard II in 1396. <laughs> 16th to 18th centuries The city underwent a period of economic decline during Tudor times. Under King Henry VIII, the dissolution of the monasteries saw the end of York's many monastic houses, including several orders of friars, the hospitals of St. Nicholas and of St. Leonard, the largest such institution in the north of England. This led to the Pilgrimage of Grace, an uprising of northern Catholics in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire opposed to religious reform. Henry VIII restored his authority by establishing the Council of the North in York in the dissolved St. Mary's Abbey. The city became a trading and service centre during this period. Guy Fawkes, who was born and educated in York, was a member of a group of Roman Catholic restorationists that planned the gunpowder plot. Its aim was to displace Protestant rule by blowing up the Houses of Parliament while King James I, the entire Protestant, and even most of the Catholic aristocracy and nobility were inside. In 1644, during the Civil War, the parliamentarians besieged York, and many medieval houses outside the city walls were lost. The Barbican at Walmgate Bar was undermined and explosives laid, but the plot was discovered. On the arrival of Prince Rupert, with an army of 15,000 men, the siege was lifted. The parliamentarians retreated some 6 miles 10 kilometers from York with Rupert in pursuit, before turning on his army and soundly defeating it at the Battle of Marston Moor. Of Rupert's 15,000 troops, 4,000 were killed and 1,500 captured. The siege was renewed and the city surrendered to Sir Thomas Fairfax on 15 July. Following the restoration of the monarchy in 1660, and the removal of the garrison from York in 1688, the city was dominated by the gentry and merchants, although the clergy were still important. Competition from Leeds and Hull, together with silting of the River Ouse, resulted in York losing its preeminent position as a trading centre, but its role as the social and cultural centre for wealthy northerners was rising. York's many elegant townhouses, such as the Lord Mayor's Mansion House and Fairfax House, date from this period, as do the Assembly Rooms, the Theatre Royal, and the Racecourse. During this period, the American city of New York and the colony that contained it were renamed after the Duke of York, later King James II. Topic: <laughs> Second Modern History. Mackall to railways come to York The railway promoter George Hudson was responsible for bringing the railway to York in 1839. Although Hudson's career as a railway entrepreneur ended in disgrace and bankruptcy, his promotion of York over Leeds, and of his own railway company, the York and North Midland Railway, helped establish York as a major railway centre by the late 19th century. The introduction of the railways established engineering in the city. At the turn of the 20th century, the railway accommodated the headquarters and works of the Northeastern Railway, which employed more than 5,500 people. The railway was instrumental in the expansion of Roundtree's Cocoa Works. 
It was founded in 1862 by Henry Isaac Rountree, who was joined in 1869 by his brother the philanthropist Joseph. Another chocolate manufacturer, Terry's of York, was a major employer. By 1900, the railways and confectionery had become the city's two major industries. In 1942, the city was bombed during the Second World War, part of the Baedeker Blitz, by the German Luftwaffe, and 92 people were killed and hundreds injured. Buildings damaged in the raid included the railway station, Rountree's factory, Poppleton Road Primary School, St. Martin Le Grand Church, the Bar Convent and the Guild Hall which was left in total disrepair until 1960. With the emergence of tourism, the historic core of York became one of the city's major assets, and in 1968 it was designated a conservation area. The existing tourist attractions were supplemented by the establishment of the National Railway Museum in York in 1975, the Yorvik Viking Center in 1984 and the York Dungeon in 1986. The opening of the University of York in 1963 added to the prosperity of the city. In March 2012, York's chocolate story opened. York was voted European Tourism City of the Year by European Cities Marketing in June 2007, beating 130 other European cities to gain first place, surpassing Gothenburg in Sweden, second, and Valencia in Spain, third. York was also voted safest place to visit in the 2010 Condé Nast Traveler Readers' Choice Awards. In 2018, the Sunday Times deemed York to be its overall best place to live in Britain, highlighting the city's perfect mix of heritage and high-tech, and as a mini-metropolis with cool cafes, destination restaurants, innovative companies, plus the fastest internet in Britain. The result was confirmed in a YouGov survey, reported in August 2018, with 92% of respondents saying that they liked the city, more than any of 56 other British cities. <laughs> <laughs> Early photography York was a centre of early photography, as described by Hugh Murray in his 1986 book Photographs and Photographers of York, The Early Years, 1844–79. Photographers who had studios in York included William Hayes, William Pumphrey, and Augustus Mahalski who operated on Davy Gate and Low Petergate in the 19th century, having come to England as a refugee after serving as a Polish lancer in the Austro-Hungarian War. Topic: Governance. Topic: Local government. For a detailed history of local government in the City of York, see City of York Council. The City of York is governed by the City of York Council. It is a unitary authority that operates on a leader and cabinet style of governance, having the powers of a non-metropolitan county and district council combined. It provides a full range of local government services including council tax billing, libraries, social services, processing planning applications, waste collection and disposal, and it is a local education authority. The City Council consists of 47 councillors representing 21 wards, with two or three per ward serving four-year terms. Its headquarters are at the Guildhall and West offices in the city centre. York is divided into 21 administrative wards, Ackham, Bishopthorpe, Clifton, Copmanthorpe, Dringhouses and Woodthorpe, Fishergate, Fulford and Heslington, Guildhall, Haxby and Wigginton, Heweth, Heweth Without, Holgate, Hull Road, Huntington and New Earswick, Micklegate, Osbaldwick and Derwent, Rawcliffe and Clifton Without, Rural West York, Strensel, Westfield, and Weldrake. The members of the Cabinet, led by the Council leader, makes decisions on their portfolio areas individually. Following the Local Government Act 2000, the council leader commands the confidence of the city council, the leader of the largest political group and head of the City of York Council. The leader of the council and the cabinet consisting of all the executive councillors are collectively accountable for their policies and actions to the city council. 
The current council leader, Liberal Democrats councillor Keith Aspton, was appointed on the 22nd of May 2019, following the 2019 City of York Council election. York's first citizen and civic head is the Lord Mayor, who is the chairman of the City of York Council. The appointment is made by the City Council each year in May, at the same time appointing the Sheriff, the City's other civic head. The offices of Lord Mayor and Sheriff are purely ceremonial. The Lord Mayor carries out civic and ceremonial duties in addition to chairing full council meetings. The incumbent Lord Mayor since the 22nd of May 2019 is Councillor Janet Looker, and the Sheriff is Joe Trithel. York Youth Council consists of several young people who negotiate with the councillors to get better facilities for York's young people, and who also elect York's Member of Youth Parliament. As a result of the 2019 City of York Council election, the Conservative Party was reduced to two seats. The Liberal Democrats had 21 councillors. The Labour Party had 17 councillors and the Green Party had four with three independents. Due to no overall control, the Liberal Democrats and the Green Party agreed to form a coalition on 14 May 2019. York is the traditional county town of Yorkshire, and therefore did not form part of any of its three historic ridings, or divisions. Its mayor has had the status of Lord Mayor since 1370. York is an ancient borough, and was reformed by the Municipal Corporations Act 1835 to form a municipal borough. It gained the status of a county borough in 1889, under the Local Government Act 1888, and existed so until 1974, when, under the Local Government Act 1972, it became a non-metropolitan district in the county of North Yorkshire, whilst retaining its Lord Mayor, its Sheriff and Aldermen. As a result of 1990s UK local government reform, York regained unitary status and saw a substantial alteration in its borders, taking in parts of Selby and Harrogate districts, and about half the population of the Rydale district. The new boundary was imposed after central government rejected the former city council's own proposal. Parliamentary constituencies. From 1997 to 2010, the central part of the district was covered by the City of York constituency, while the remainder was split between the constituencies of Rydale, Selby, and Vale of York. These constituencies were represented by Hugh Bailey, John Greenway, John Grogan, and Anne McIntosh respectively. Following their review in 2003 of parliamentary representation in North Yorkshire, the Boundary Commission for England recommended the creation of two new seats for the City of York, in time for the general election in 2010. These are York Central, which covers the inner urban area, and is entirely surrounded by the York Outer constituency. The whole of the city and local council area lies within the Yorkshire and the Humber constituency of the European Parliament. Ceremonial governance York is within the ceremonial territorial jurisdiction of the Dukedom of York which is presently held by Prince Andrew, the incumbent Duke of York. Geography <inaudible> 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 Topic. Location The city is 22 miles 35 km northeast of Leeds, and is part of the Leeds region. York lies in the Vale of York, a flat area of fertile arable land bordered by the Pennines, the North York Moors, and the Yorkshire Wolds. The city was built at the confluence of the rivers Ouse and Foss on a terminal moraine left by the last ice age. During Roman times, the land surrounding the rivers Ouse and Foss was marshy, making the site easy to defend. The city is prone to flooding from the river Ouse, and has an extensive and until 2015 mostly effective network of flood defences with walls along the river, and a liftable barrier across the river Foss where it joins the Ouse at the Blue Bridge. In October and November 2000, York experienced the worst flooding in 375 years, more than 300 homes were flooded. 
In December 2015 the flooding was more extensive and caused major disruption. The extreme impact led to a personal visit by Prime Minister David Cameron. Much land in and around the city is on flood plains too flood prone for development other than agriculture. The Ings are flood meadows along the Ouse, while the Strays are open common grassland in various locations around the city. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Architecture York Minster, a large Gothic cathedral, dominates the city. York Castle, a complex of buildings ranging from the medieval Clifford's Tower to the 20th century entrance to the York Castle Museum formerly a prison, has had a checkered history. York's centre is enclosed by the city's medieval walls, which are a popular walk. These defences are the most complete in England. They have the only walls set on high ramparts and they retain all their principal gateways. They incorporate part of the walls of the Roman fortress and some Norman and medieval work, as well as 19th and 20th century renovations. The entire circuit is approximately 2.5 miles 4 km, and encloses an area of 263 acres 106 hectares. The northeast section includes a part where walls never existed, because the Norman moat of York Castle, formed by damming the River Foss, also created a lake which acted as a city defence. This lake was later called the King's Fish Pond, as the rights to fish belonged to the Crown. A feature of central York is the Snickleways, narrow pedestrian routes, many of which led towards the former marketplaces in Pavement and St. Sampson's Square. The Shambles is a narrow medieval street, lined with shops, boutiques and tea rooms. Most of these premises were once butchers' shops, and the hooks from which carcasses were hung and the shelves on which meat was laid out can still be seen outside some of them. The street also contains the shrine of Margaret Clitheroe, although it is not located in the house where she lived. Goodrum Gate has many medieval houses including the early 14th century Lady Row built to finance a chantry, at the edge of the churchyard of Holy Trinity Church. As well as the Castle Museum, the city contains numerous other museums and historic buildings such as the Yorkshire Museum and its Museum Gardens, Yorvik Viking Centre, York Art Gallery, the Richard III Experience, Merchant Adventurers Hall, the reconstructed medieval house Barley Hall owned by the York Archaeological Trust, the 18th century Fairfax House, the Mansion House the historic home of the Lord Mayor and the so-called Treasurer's House owned by the National Trust. The National Railway Museum is situated just beyond the station, and is home to a vast range of transport material and the largest collection of railway locomotives in the world. Included in this collection are the world's fastest steam locomotive LNER Class A4 4468 Mallard and the world famous LNER Class A3 4472 Flying Scotsman, which has been overhauled in the museum. Although noted for its medieval history, visitors can also gain an understanding of the Cold War through visiting the York Cold War Bunker, former headquarters of No. 20 Group of the Royal Observer Corps. York is noted for its numerous churches and pubs. Most of the remaining churches in York are from the medieval period. St. William's College behind the Minster, and Bedden Hall, off Goodramgate, are former dwelling places of the canons of the York Minster. Topic. Climate York has a temperate climate with four distinct seasons. As with the rest of the Vale of York the city's climate is drier and warmer than the rest of the Yorkshire and Humberside region. Owing to its lowland location, York is prone to frosts, fog, and cold winds during winter, spring and very early summer. Snow can fall in winter from December onwards to as late as April but quickly melts. As with much of the British Isles, the weather is changeable. York experiences most sunshine from May to July, an average of six hours per day. With its inland location, summers are often warmer than the Yorkshire coast with temperatures of 27 degrees Celsius or more. 
Extremes recorded at the University of York campus between 1998 and 2010 include a highest temperature of 34.5 degrees Celsius (94.1 degrees Fahrenheit) and a lowest temperature of -16.3 degrees Celsius (2.7 degrees Fahrenheit) Monday, the 6th of December 2010. The most rainfall in one day was 88.4 mm (3.5 in). Green Belt York is bounded by a Green Belt area, which more rigorously manages development around the rural area of the district and portions of surrounding districts, primarily to preserve the setting and historic character of York. The belt covers nearly all of the city district including all its outer villages, and extends into the surrounding North Yorkshire districts of Hambleton, Harrogate, Rydale, and Selby. Topic: Demography. The York urban area, built-up area, had a population of 153,717 at the time of the 2011 UK census, compared with 137,505 in 2001. The population of the City of York local authority was 198,051 and its ethnic composition was 94.3% white, 1.2% mixed, 3.4% Asian and 0.6% black. York's elderly population those 65 and over was 16.9%, however only 13.2% were listed as retired. Also at the time of the 2001 UK census, the City of York had a total population of 181,094 of whom 93,957 were female and 87,137 were male. Of the 76,920 households in York, 36.0% were married couples living together, 31.3% were one-person households, 8.7% were cohabiting couples and 8.0% were lone parents. The figures for lone parent households were below the national average of 9.5%, and the percentage of married couples was also close to the national average of 36.5%. The proportion of one person households was slightly higher than the national average of 30.1%. In 2001, the population density was 4,368 per square kilometres. 11,310 per square miles. Of those aged 16 to 74 in York, 24.6% had no academic qualifications, a little lower than 28.9% in all of England. Of York's residents, 5.1% were born outside the United Kingdom, significantly lower than the national average of 9.2%. White British form 95% of the population. The largest single minority group was recorded as Asian, at 1.9% of the population. The number of theft from a vehicle offences and theft of a vehicle per 1,000 of the population was 8.8 .8 and 2.7, compared to the English national average of 6.9 and 2.7 respectively. The number of sexual offences was 0.9, in line with the national average. The national average of violence against another person was 16.2 compared to the York average of 17.5. The figures for crime statistics were all recorded during the 2006–07 financial year. <inaudible> Population change The table below details the population change since 1801. <inaudible> <inaudible> Religion. Christianity is the religion with the largest following in York, with 59.5% residents reporting themselves as Christian in the 2011 census. The percentages following each non-Christian religion were all below the national average for England, but those responding as, "...no religion," were higher than the national average. There are 33 active Anglican churches in York, which is home to the Archbishop of York and York Minster, the Mother Church and Administrative Centre of the Northern Province of the Church of England and the Diocese of York. 
York is in the Roman Catholic Diocese of Middlesbrough, has eight Roman Catholic churches and a number of different Catholic religious orders. Leaders of different Christian denominations work together across the city, forming a network of churches known as One Voice York. Other Christian denominations that are active in York include the Religious Society of Friends, who have three meeting houses, Methodists within the York Circuit of the Methodist Church York and Hull District, and Unitarians. St. Columba's United Reformed Church in Priory Street, originally built for the Presbyterians, dates from 1879. York's only mosque is located in the Leithorpe area, and the city also has a UK Islamic mission centre. Various Buddhist traditions are represented in the city and around York. Economy <inaudible> 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 York's economy is based on the service industry, which in 2000 was responsible for 88.7% of employment in the city. The service industries include public sector employment, health, education, finance, information technology and tourism that accounts for 10.7% of employment. Tourism has become an important element of the economy, with the city offering a wealth of historic attractions, of which York Minster is the most prominent, and a variety of cultural activities. As a holiday destination York was the sixth most visited English city by UK residents 2014 and the thirteenth most visited by overseas visitors 2016. A 2014 report, based on 2012 data, stated that the city receives 6.9 million visitors annually, they contribute £564 million to the economy and support over 19,000 jobs. In the 2017 Condé Nast Traveller Survey of Readers, York rated 12th among the 15 best cities in the UK for visitors. Unemployment in York was low at 4.2% in 2008 compared to the United Kingdom national average of 5.3%. The biggest employer in York is the City of York Council, with over 7,500 employees. Employers with more than 2,000 staff include Aviva formerly Norwich Union Life, Network Rail, Northern, York Hospitals NHS Trust and the University of York. Other major employers include British Telecom, CPP Group, Nestlé, NFU Mutual and a number of railway companies. Today's economic position is very different from the 1950s, when its prosperity was based on chocolate manufacturing and the railways. This position continued until the early 1980s when 30% of the workforce were employed by just five employers and 75% of manufacturing jobs were in four companies. Most industry around the railway has gone, including the carriage works known as ASEA Brown Bovary or AB at the time of closure, which at its height in the 1880s employed 5,500 people, but closed in the mid-1990s. York is the headquarters of the confectionery manufacturer Nestlé York formerly Nestlé Rountries and home to the Kit Kat and eponymous Yorkie bar chocolate brands. Terry's Chocolate Factory, makers of the chocolate orange, was located in the city, but it closed on 30 September 2005, when production was moved by its owners, Kraft Foods, to Poland. The historic factory building is situated next to the Knavesmeyer Racecourse. On 20 September 2006, Nestlé announced that it would cut 645 jobs at the Roundtree's Chocolate Factory in York. This came after a number of other job losses in the city at Aviva, British Sugar and Terry's Chocolate Factory. Despite this, the employment situation in York remained fairly buoyant until the effects of the late 2000s recession began to be felt. Since the closure of the carriage works, the site has been developed into offices. York's economy has been developing in the areas of science, technology and the creative industries. The city became a founding national science city with the creation of a science park near the University of York. Between 1998 and 2008 York gained 80 new technology companies and 2,800 new jobs in the sector. Regional gross value added figures for York, at 2005 basic prices in millions of pounds sterling, are Public services 
Under the requirements of the Municipal Corporations Act 1835, York City Council appointed a watch committee which established a police force and appointed a chief constable. On 1 June 1968 the York City, East Riding of Yorkshire and North Riding of Yorkshire Police Forces were amalgamated to form the York and North East Yorkshire Police. Since 1974, Home Office Policing in York has been provided by the North Yorkshire Police. The force's central headquarters for policing York and nearby Selby are in Fulford. Statutory emergency fire and rescue service is provided by the North Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service, whose headquarters is at Northallerton. The city's first hospital, York County Hospital, opened in 1740 in Monkgate, funded by public subscription. It closed in 1976 when it was replaced by York Hospital, which opened the same year and gained foundation status in April 2007. It has 524 adult inpatient beds and 127 special purpose beds providing general health care and some specialist inpatient, day case and outpatient services. It is also known as York District Hospital and YDH. The Yorkshire Ambulance Service NHS Trust was formed on the 1st of July 2006, bringing together South Yorkshire Ambulance Service, West Yorkshire Metropolitan Ambulance Service, and the North and East Yorkshire parts of Tees, East and North Yorkshire Ambulance Service to provide patient transport. Other forms of health care are provided for locally by clinics and surgeries. The city's first subscription library opened in 1794. The first free public library, the York Library, was built on Clifford Street in 1893, to mark Queen Victoria's Jubilee. A new building was erected on Museum Street in 1927, and this is still the library today. It was extended in 1934 and 1938. Since 1998, waste management has been coordinated via the York and North Yorkshire Waste Partnership. York's distribution network operator for electricity is CE Electric UK. There are no power stations in the city. Yorkshire Water, which has a local water extraction plant on the River Derwent at Elvington, manages York's drinking and wastewater. The city has a magistrate's court, and venues for the Crown Court and the County Court. The Crown Court House was designed by the architect John Carr, next to the then prison including execution area, between 1773 and 1777, the Grand Jury House was replaced by John Carr's elegant court house for the assizes of the whole county. The female prison was built opposite and mirrors the court building positioned around a circular lawn which became known as the Eye of the Ridings, or the Eye of York. 1776 saw the last recorded instance of a wife hanged and burnt for poisoning her husband. Horse theft was a capital offence. The culprits of lesser crimes were brought to court by the city constables and would face a fine. The corporation employed a common informer whose task was to bring criminals to justice. The former prison is now the Castle Museum but still contains the cells. Transport York's location on the River Ouse and in the centre of the Vale of York means that it has always had a significant position in the nation's transport system. The city grew up as a river port at the confluence of the River Ouse and the River Foss. The Ouse was originally a tidal river, accessible to seagoing ships of the time. Today both of these rivers remain navigable, although the Foss is only navigable for a short distance above the confluence. A lock at Nabon on the Ouse to the south of York means that the river in York is no longer tidal. Until the end of the 20th century, the Ouse was used by barges to carry freight between York and the port of Hull. The last significant such traffic was the supply of newsprint to the local newspaper's Foss side print works, which continued until 1997. Today navigation is almost exclusively leisure-oriented. Like most cities founded by the Romans, York is well served by long-distance trunk roads. The city lies at the intersection of the A19 road from Doncaster to Tyneside, the A59 road from Liverpool to York, the A64 road from Leeds to Scarborough, and the A1079 road from York to Hull. 
The A64 road provides the principal link to the motorway network, linking York to both the A1M and the M1 motorways at a distance of about 10 miles from the city. The Transpennine M62 motorway is less than 20 miles away providing links to Manchester and Liverpool. The city is surrounded on all sides by an outer ring road, at a distance of some 3 miles 5 km from the centre of the city, which allows through traffic to bypass the city. The street plan of the historic core of the city dates from medieval times and is not suitable for modern traffic. As a consequence many of the routes inside the city walls are designated as car-free during business hours or restrict traffic entirely. To alleviate this situation, six bus-based park-and-ride sites operate in York. The sites are located towards the edge of the urban area, with easy access from the Ring Road, and allow out-of-town visitors to complete their journey into the city centre by bus. York has been a major railway centre since the first line arrived in 1839 at the beginning of the railway age. For many years the city hosted the headquarters and works of the North Eastern Railway. York Railway Station is a principal stop on the East Coast Main Line from London to Newcastle and Edinburgh. It takes less than two hours to get to York from London by rail, with at least 25 direct trains each weekday. The station is also served by long-distance trains on cross-country services linking Edinburgh and Newcastle with destinations in South and West England via Birmingham. Transpennine Express provide a frequent service of semi-fast trains linking York to Newcastle, Scarborough, Leeds, Manchester, Manchester Airport, and Liverpool. Local stopping services by Northern connect York to Selby, Harrogate, Hull, Leeds, Sheffield and many intermediate points, as well as many other stations across Greater Manchester and Lancashire. York has an airfield at the former RAF Elvington, some 7 miles 11 kilometers southeast of the city centre, which is the home of the Yorkshire Air Museum. Elvington is used for private aviation. In 2003 plans were drafted to expand the site for business aviation or a full commercial service. York is linked to Manchester Airport by an hourly direct Transpennine Express train, giving access to the principal airport serving the north of England, with connections to many destinations in Europe, North America, Africa, and Asia. Leeds Bradford Airport is closer to York but the hourly York Air coach service operated by First York was withdrawn as of April 2009. Leeds Bradford Airport provides connections to most major European and North African airports as well as Pakistan and New York City. Public transport within the city is largely bus-based. First York operates the majority of the city's local bus services, as well as the York Park and Ride services. York was the location of the first implementation of First Group's experimental and controversial FTR bus concept, which sought to confer the advantages of a modern tramway system at a lower cost. The service was withdrawn following an election manifesto pledge by the Labour Group at the 2011 local government election. Transdev York also operates a large number of local bus services. Open top tourist and sightseeing buses are operated by Transdev York on behalf of city sightseeing. Rural services, linking local towns and villages with York, are provided by a number of companies with Transdev York, A's, and Reliance operating most of them. Longer distance bus services are provided by a number of operators, including Arriva Yorkshire Services to Selby, East Yorkshire Motor Services routes to Hull, Beverley, Driffield, Market Wheaton and Pocklington, and Harrogate Bus Company Services to Knaresborough and Harrogate. Yorkshire Coastliner links Leeds via York with Scarborough, Filey, Bridlington and Whitby. Local Transport Plan 2006 English local authorities are required to produce local transport plans LTPs, strategies for developing local integrated transport as part of a longer-term vision. LTPs are used by central government to allocate funding for transport schemes. The final Local Transport Plan 2006-2011 for York was submitted to central government in March 2006. 
The plan addresses the fact that traffic in York is predicted to grow considerably over the coming years. The key aims of the plan are to ease congestion and improve accessibility, air quality and safety. Major funding allocations earmarked for the first five years of the plan's lifespan include outer ring road improvements, improved management of the highway network, improvements to the bus network including park and ride services, provision of off-road walking and cycling routes, air quality improvements and safety measures. Education <inaudible> 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 The University of York's main campus is on the southern edge of the city at Heslington. The Department of Archaeology and the Graduate Centers for 18th Century Studies and Medieval Studies are located in the historic King's Manor in the city center. It was York's only institution with university status until 2006, when the more centrally located York St. John University, formerly an autonomous college of the University of Leeds, attained full university status. The city formerly hosted a branch of the University of Law before it moved to Leeds. The University of York also has a medical school, Hull York Medical School. The city has two major further education institutions. York College is an amalgamation of York Technical College and York Sixth Form College. Students there study a very wide range of academic and vocational courses, and range from school leavers and sixth formers to people training to make career moves. Ascombe Bryan College offers further education courses, foundation and honors degrees, specializing in more vocational subjects such as horticulture, agriculture, animal management and even golf course management. There are 70 local council schools with over 24,000 pupils in the City of York Council area. The City of York Council manages most primary and secondary schools within the city. Primary schools cover education from ages 5 to 11, with some offering early years education from age 3. From 11 to 16 education is provided by 10 secondary schools, four of which offer additional education up to the age of 18. In 2007 Oakland Sports College and Lowfield Comprehensive School merged to become one school known as York High School. York also has several private schools. St. Peter's School was founded in 627. The scholar Alquin, who went on to serve Charlemagne, taught there. It was also the school attended by Guy Fawkes. Two schools have Quaker origins, Bootham School is co-educational and the Mount School is all girls. On the outskirts of the city is Queen Margaret's School. Pupils from the Minster School, York sing in York Minster Choir. Topic: Culture. Topic: Theatre. The Theatre Royal, which was established in 1744, produces an annual pantomime which attracts loyal audiences from around the country to see its veteran star, Berwick Kaler. The Grand Opera House and Joseph Rowntree Theatre also offer a variety of productions. The city is home to the Riding Lights Theatre Company, which as well as operating a busy national touring department, also operates a busy youth theatre and educational departments. York is also home to a number of amateur dramatic groups. The Department of Theatre, Film and Television and Student Societies of the University of York put on public drama performances. The York Mystery Plays are performed in public at intervals, using texts based on the original medieval plays of this type that were performed by the guilds, often with specific connections to the subject matter of each play. For instance the shipwright's play is the building of Noah's Ark and the fish sellers and mariners the landing of Noah's Ark. The York cycle of mystery plays or pageants is the most complete in England. Originally performed from wagons at various locations around the city from the 14th century until 1570, they were revived in 1951 during the Festival of Britain, when York was one of the cities with a regional festival. They became part of the York City Festival every three years and later four years. 
They were mostly produced in a temporary open-air theatre within the ruins of St. Mary's Abbey, using some professional but mostly amateur actors. Lead actors have included Christopher Timothy and Robson Green in the role of Christ and Dame Judi Dench as a schoolgirl, in 1951, 1954 and 1957. She remains a patron of the plays. The cycle was presented in the Theatre Royal in 1992 and 1996, within York Minster in 2000 and in 2002, 2006 and 2010 by guild groups from Wagons in the Squares, in the Dean's Park, or at the Eye of York. They go around the streets, recreating the original productions. In 2012, the York Mystery Plays were performed between 2 and 27 August at St. Mary's Abbey in the York Museum Gardens. Topic. Music The Academy of St. Olives, a chamber orchestra which gives concerts in St. Olives Church, Marygate, is one of the music groups that perform regularly in York. A former church, St. Margaret's, Walmgate, is the national center for early music, which hosts concerts, broadcasts, competitions and events including the York Early Music Festival. Students, staff and visiting artists of York St. John University Music Department regularly perform lunchtime concerts in the University Chapel. The staff and students of the University of York also perform in the city. <laughs> York Ham One of the notable local products is York ham, a mild flavored ham with delicate pink coloring. It is traditionally served with Madeira sauce. As a lightly smoked, dry cured ham, York ham is saltier but milder in flavor than other European dry cured hams. Folklore has it that the oak construction for York Minster provided the sawdust for smoking the ham. Robert Burrow Atkinson's butchery shop, in Blossom Street, is the birthplace of the original. York Ham, and the reason why the premises became famous. Topic: <inaudible> Gastronomy. Each September since 1997, York has held an annual festival of food and drink. The aim of the festival is to spotlight food culture in York and North Yorkshire by promoting local food production. The festival attracts up to 150,000 visitors over 10 days, from all over the country. In the centre of York, in St. Helens Square, there is the York branch of Betty's Cafe Tea Rooms. Betty's founder, Frederick Belmont, travelled on the maiden voyage of the Queen Mary in 1936. He was so impressed by the splendor of the ship that he employed the Queen Mary's designers and craftsmen to turn a dilapidated furniture store in York into an elegant café in St. Helens Square. A few years after Betty's opened in York War broke out, and the basement Betty's Bar became a favorite haunt of the thousands of airmen stationed around York. Betty's mirror, on which many of them engraved their signatures with a diamond pen, remains on display today as a tribute to them. Topic beer and pubs The Assize of Ale is an annual event in the city where people in medieval costume take part in a pub crawl to raise money for local charities. It has its origins in the 13th century, when an assize of bread and ale was used to regulate the quality of goods. The current version was resurrected in the 1990s by the Sheriff of York and is led by the Guild of Scriveners. In June 2015 York Camera listed 101 pubs on its map of the city centre, some of which are hundreds of years old. These include the Golden Fleece, Ye Olde Star Inn, noted for its sign which has spanned the street since 1733, and the King's Arms, often photographed during floods. On 18 June 2016, York Camera undertook a beer census and found 328 unique real ales being served in over 200 pubs in York, reinforcing the city's reputation as a top UK beer destination. The Knavesmire, home of York Racecourse, plays host to Yorkshire's largest beer festival every September, run by York Camera, York Beer and Cider Festival. It is housed in a marquee opposite the grandstand of the racecourse in the enclosure and in 2016 offered over 450 real ales and over 100 ciders.
Topic: UNESCO status bids. In 2010 York City Council and a number of heritage organizations submitted a bid for York's entire city center to become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This nomination, to the UK's Department for Culture, Media and Sport would have included York on a list of tentative sites to be reviewed by UNESCO itself. York's bid failed, leading to disappointment from the team involved. This indirectly led to the city making a successful bid to be part of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network as a city of media arts. It is the fourth of these cities, following Lyon, France, Enghien les Bains, France, and Sapporo, Japan. Topic media The York area is served by a local newspaper, The Press, known as the Evening Press until April 2006, the York Advertiser newspaper, based at The Press on Walmgate, and three local radio stations Minster FM, Vale Radio and BBC Radio York. Local arts, culture news and events are covered by one and other. Another digital news website is York Mix run by former print journalists, that incorporates local news, what's on, food and drink, things to do and business sections with articles written by residents and local journalists. In August 2016 York Mix was nominated in two categories in the O2 Media Awards for Yorkshire and the Humber. On 27 November 2013, Ofcom awarded the 12-year local TV license for the York area to a consortium entitled the York Channel, with the channel due to be on air in spring 2015. York St. John University has a film and television production department with links to many major industrial partners. The department hosts an annual festival of student work and a showcase of other regional films. The University of York has its own television station, York Student Television (YSTV), and two campus newspapers, Nous and York Vision. Its radio station, URI, is the longest-running legal independent radio station in the UK and was voted BBC Radio One Student Radio Station of the Year 2005. Topic: Sport. The city's football team is York City, who are competing in National League North as of the 2017-18 season. York have played as high as the old Second Division, but are best known for their giant killing status in cup competitions, having reached the FA Cup semi-final in 1955 and beaten Manchester United 3-0 during the 1995-96 League Cup. Their matches are played at Bootham Crescent. York also has a strong rugby league history. York FC, later known as York Wasps, formed in 1901, were one of the oldest rugby league clubs in the country, but the effects of a move to the out of town Huntington Stadium, poor results, and falling attendances led to their bankruptcy in 2002. The supporters formed a new club, York City Knights, who now play at the same stadium in Championship One. There are three amateur rugby league teams in York, New Earswick All Blacks in New Earswick, York Acorn and Heweth. York International Nines was an annual rugby league nines tournament which took place in York between 2002 and 2009. Amateur side York Locomotive compete in the rugby league conference. An open rowing club York City Rowing Club is located underneath Lendl Bridge. The rowing clubs of the University of York, York St. John University Rowing Club and Leeds University Boat Club as well as York City RC use the ooze for training. There are two sailing clubs close to York, both of which sail dinghies on the River Ouse. The York Re Railway Institute Sailing Club has a clubhouse and boat park on the outskirts of Bishopthorpe, a village 3 miles kilometers to the south of York. The Yorkshire Ouse Sailing Club has a clubhouse in the village of Nabon, 5 miles kilometers south of York. York Racecourse was established in 1731 and from 1990 has been awarded Northern Racecourse of the Year for 17 years running. This major horse racing venue is located on the Knavesmire and sees thousands flocking to the city every year for the 15 race meetings. The Knavesmire Racecourse also hosted Royal Ascot in 2005. 
In August racing takes place over the four-day Ebor Festival that includes the Ebor Handicap dating from 1843. Motorbike Speedway once took place at York. The track in the Burnholm Estate was completed in 1930 and a demonstration event staged. In 1931 the track staged team and open events and the York team took part in the national trophy. York hosts the UK Snooker Championship, which is the second biggest ranking tournament in the sport, at the York Barbican Centre. On 6 July 2014, York hosted the start of Stage 2 of the 2014 Tour de France. Starting the Depart Fictif from York Racecourse, the riders travelled through the city centre to the Depart Actual on the A59 just beyond the junction with the Outer Ring Road heading towards Knaresborough. In 2015, the inaugural Tour de Yorkshire was held as a legacy event to build on the popularity of the previous year, with the Day 2 stage finishing in York. The most notable sportsmen to come from York in recent years are footballers Lucy Stanifeth, under-20 World Cup winning captain Lewis Cook and former England manager Steve McLaren. Geodesy <laughs> 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 York Minster was the origin meridian of the 6-inch and 1-2500 Ordnance Survey maps for Yorkshire. International relations Twin towns, sister cities On the 22nd of October 2014, it announced the first temporal twinning with Jorvik, the Viking city on the site of York from 866 to 1066. Topic: See also List of people from York The Evelyn collection of pictures of York from the early 20th century. Topic Notes A There was no census in 1941, figures are from National Register. United Kingdom and Isle of Man. Statistics of population on 29 September 1939 by sex, age and marital condition. B. There is a discrepancy of 37 between Office for National Statistics figures quoted before and those on the Vision of Britain website quoted here.